The other day, I was taking a nap when my cat, Portia, trundled over to me and started licking my face. She's the friendliest cat I've ever known. My wife and I often joke that more people know her name in our neighborhood than know ours because she spends so much time trying to get pets from strangers who pass on the street. Anyway, I was still half asleep and obviously wasn't paying her enough attention, so she upped her game and gave my nose just the tiniest, cutest little bite you ever did see. That's when my half-conscious mind remembered this story I've been hearing for decades, that cats will eat your face when you die. If you die in a home that's locked with animals, you're, those animals will eat you no. really fast, especially oh. a cat. If you don't feed your cat long enough, it's going to try to get your attention with little cute little nibbles. And then one thing will lead to another until it realizes that you're the only good food source available. I didn't really think that I was in any danger during my nap, but it did make me wonder, how long would I have to be dead before my cat decided to turn me into dinner? So I took a jaunt through the forensic literature and scientific reports to answer that very question. Now, before I go any deeper here, I think it's important to offer up a little warning for sensitive viewers. The reality of post-mortem depredation, which is the scientific word for animals eating dead humans, can get a little gruesome. I'm not going to show anything truly graphic. You can Google up those images all on your own. But even talking about this stuff is a little more disturbing than I thought it would be before I set out. So I don't know. If you're not comfortable with this sort of thing, maybe go check out this other video I did about a common cat parasite that could be controlling your mind. Still here? Okay, let's dig in. I was a little surprised at how much scientific literature there is on this topic because it turns out that forensic pathologists involved in crime scene investigations frequently lament in print how animal scavenging makes their jobs so much more difficult to determine the time of death. In one paper I came across in a forensics journal, a pathologist lamented how a certain monitor lizard ate part of the corpse that he was dissecting, dryly noting that animal scavenging activity on human corpses plays a vital and important role in maintaining the food chain. However, when human bodies are found outdoors, scavenging activity by animals often affects the death investigation process Monitor lizard. I added that last bit. Anyway, I take it that this was him trying to shame that monitor lizard. Of course, we're not really interested in people who die outside surrounded by carnivorous lizards. What about our pets? The answer is yes. Your pet is a lot like a Komodo dragon when it comes to mealtime. In another case, Cats almost completely devoured a 69-year-old man who I'm guessing was a hoarder. To quote the report, although it was asserted that the decedent owned as many as 30 cats, this number was not able to be confirmed as the large number of cats at the scene soon escaped through the open doors, including the one which was initially found within the empty chest cavity. That last part. I mean, I sort of get it. Every time I open up a package from Amazon, my cats make a point of commandeering the boxes. It's kind of what cats do. Regardless, in this case, the damage was so extensive that the medical examiner had no way to determine the cause of death. However, with the speed of their exit from the premises, it also appears that the cats were locked inside the home and really didn't have a lot of other options. I can't blame them. Suffice it to say, there's a lot of these reports out there where medical examiners compare notes from various events all around the world where cats and dogs did whatever they had to do to survive. But what about that other part of the urban legend? Will cats really start out by eating their owner's faces? What seemed like it was just this urban legend at first actually seems to check out. A study out of the forensic office in Fort Collins, Colorado showed that Felis catus began their scavenging behavior at the nose and lips. 
Meanwhile, more wild variants of felines, like bobcats, prefer eating human arms and hands first, which makes me think that maybe these domesticated species are just a little more familiar with us. I don't know. But maybe some of you dog owners who like to claim that dogs are just so much better than cats might take this to be a notch in favor of Fido. Well, that's only because you haven't heard the story of Isabel de Nore. In 2005, Denore accidentally took too many sleeping pills and fell unconscious at her flat in France. According to the memoir she later wrote about the event, over the course of the evening, her black Labrador retriever severely mauled and ate part of her face while she was semi-conscious. Some reports say that she felt helpless and was aware that she was being consumed. Her daughter arrived sometime later and claimed that the dog maybe was just trying to frantically wake the owner up. Denori's case made headlines around the world afterwards when she became the first person to receive a partial face transplant. This story really, really, really gets to me. But it does seem that it is a bit of an outlier. According to what counts as a consensus in these sorts of things, cats are definitely on average more eager to consume their owners than dogs. Typically, cases of feline depredation begin two or three days after an owner's death, while the generally more genial and polite canines will wait on average about seven days. So to answer the question I posed at the top of this video, yes, your pet will definitely eat you when you die. And that makes me wonder a little bit why this question is so fascinating. Researching this piece ended up putting me in contact with a lot more disturbing imagery than I was expecting. Forensic journals are not for the faint of heart, but at the same time, it's always been one of those things that I've thrown out in conversations where I talk about what it's like to be a cat owner. It's almost a joke. Of course my cat will eat me when I die. And when I get past the grossness of the process, I do sort of take heart at what that pathologist wrote about the monitor lizard disturbing his crime scene. Death is part of the natural life cycle. I know that I wouldn't want my cats to go hungry after I pass. I wouldn't take any comfort in them starving if I couldn't do my pet owning responsibilities. If they have to eat me to survive, and so be it. And I'll bet you that the hoarder who died surrounded by his cats would have at least taken a little solace in the fact that even in death, he was able to take care of his pets. And so that's my investigation for today. From Pokey Bear LLC in Denver, Colorado, this was Scott Carney Investigates.